Welcome to the super fast touch designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll create a unique iridescent melting drop texture. Follow each step to achieve your desired outcome and feel free to experiment with the parameters once you've completed the tutorial. Part one, network. Let's start by setting up the network. Don't worry about the parameters yet and don't fret if you don't see anything on the final output. Trust the process. Begin by adding a constant to the network. Next, we'll use one of the custom components I've created throughout the Pseudo Liquids tutorial series. If you're interested in building this component yourself, I've included the video tutorial link in the description. If you're in a hurry, you can download it directly from my Patreon. Create an edge followed by a composite operator and connect the Pseudo Liquids component to the second input of the composite. Add a displaced top, and as usual, connect the last output to both inputs of the composite, regardless of the order. Perfect. Now create a level operator followed by a feedback. This feedback is slightly customized with additional parameters like level, feedback weight, transform, and a final blur. You can use the default feedback in Touch Designer if you prefer, and add the same chain of operators. Connect the level to the feedback. Next, bring in another element from the Touch Designer palette by opening the palette and inserting a convolve operator. After this, add a second level followed by a composite operator. To complete the second input of the composite, create a constant. Great, we're almost there. Add another convolve operator and in parallel, create a third level. Now, create a new composite operator and connect the last two operators to it. Add a fourth level, followed by a displace to finalize the network with an out operator for visualizing the composition. Finally, don't forget to select all the operators and, in the Common tab, set the output resolution to parent panel size. This network is simple, yet highly effective for our purposes. Now, let's move on to parameterizing everything. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank you all for watching and subscribing to my channel. Reaching over 200 subscribers in just two weeks is beyond my wildest expectations. I'm excited that so many of you are enjoying my content. However, I noticed that 73.3% of viewers haven't subscribed yet. If you found my videos helpful or inspiring, please hit that subscribe button. It's a small gesture that makes a huge difference in helping me create more high-quality touch designer tutorials. Let's reduce that 73.3% to 50% together. Thank you. Part 2. Parameters. First, select the constant operator and copy these values for the color. Later, you can explore other parameters. Now, copy the following parameters into the custom component, pseudo liquids. Go to the colors tab and use these values. Next, select the Noise tab and copy these parameters. As always, we'll animate the noise using the script, abs time dot seconds divided by 15. Select the Edge tab and copy these parameters. Then, do the same for the remaining parameters of the pseudo liquids component.
Great. Let's move on to the edge operator and copy the following values. Select the composite and set the blending mode to pin light. Now, go to the displace operator and assign these parameters. Select the first level and copy these values. Perfect. Let's proceed to the feedback component and copy the following parameters. We'll leave the first convolve as it is and do the same for the second convolve. Select the second level and copy these values. For now, we'll leave the constant operator blank. We should start to see some results now. Select the second composite and set the operation to negate. Move on to the third level and copy these values. Select the final composite and use the average blending mode to mix the colors. Finally, for the last level, use these values and make sure to invert the color here. When you apply these settings to the displace operator, you will achieve this iridescent texture that looks like melting drops on a plane. If you want, we can fix some of these distortions by adding a bit of blur in the feedback. Before we continue, I want to remind you that I've created version 2.0 of Pseudo Liquids, which allows you to save, record, and load presets. It also includes seven basic presets to get you started with your experiments. You can find all of this on my Patreon, along with free VJ packs available to all subscribers of the free plan. I hope to see you there. Part 3. Play and Explore. Most of the time, just using the noise operator can significantly alter the results, and you can do this in this composition. However, there's something even more intriguing. In the final level of pseudo liquids, you can subtly adjust the parameters to achieve an effect similar to a vector field or displacement seen in 3D. Let's try modifying some values and see what results we get. I hope you were able to complete the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments.